Welcome to CNBC TV 18's latest offering, Get Rich. I think amongst us, uh, Mangalam, we've all got nifty millionaires. So the question is, have you guys become billionaires yet? We have the nifty at record highs, 9,200. So tell me, who's captured this big market rally? Raise your hand. Oh, okay, we have one gentleman out there. Okay, but you know, someone was hesitantly raising their hand somewhere there. Come on, you guys can raise your hands. We won't tell anyone <laughs> if you have made the money. Also, it's interesting to see so many people in a college on a Saturday, actually, you know. But, uh, you know, the Nifty is at record highs, 9,000. Uh, my mind goes back to two years ago, March 4, 2015, where we were at 9,000 as well. After that, you know, we had the massive fall and then the massive resurrection on the Nifty. Not to suggest anything of that sort is going to happen, but keep in mind, give and take everything. If you uh, stuck to good quality stocks, you had the likes of Aisha Motors, uh, you had Maruti, uh, Yes Bank, all of them gave you 76%, 70 to 75 percent returns over the last two years whereas if you were stuck in the likes of BHEL and IDR remember both of them are at 52 week high but still down almost 30 percent from the last two years so the idea is to try and maximize the winners and try and minimize the losers and that is what CNBC TV 18's Get Rich is all about right? Uh, yes indeed but I think you know last week was of course phenomenal for our markets right. we had the benefit of the landslide victory by the BJP in Uttar Pradesh there was progress on GST the Fed raised hikes but, you know, he sounded a bit hawk. He sounded less hawkish than what the market was expecting. So last week was great. But, you know, the way we opened at record levels, but, you know, gave up ground from the high point of today, raises questions that from here on, what happens? You know, is this the euphoric bull run that we experienced from 2005 to 2008? Or is this time something different? I think that's the question, given the way last week we moved, uh, is the question everyone's going to be asking. And going ahead, we don't have that many triggers as well. So we'll be back to tracking the earnings now. Uh, GST, yes, there's progress, but there is still the fitment of, you know, which goods, which service comes in which bracket, which tax lab. Uh, we don't know yet the full impact of right. demonetization. So I'm saying the upside triggers from here on, we'll have to wait by. Uh, last week, we got a whole lot of them. So let's see what lies in store. But I guess whether this rally continues, what are the quality stocks you need to pick from here? That's not the answer we're going to give. We've got three wise men joining us today. Uh, so first, let me quickly introduce them. We have Arun Tukral, we have Amisha Vora and Prakash Divan. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to us this Saturday morning. So let's um, get the first wise man on the stage. <laughs> Arun Tukral, the MD and CEO of Axis Securities. He's got more than two decades of experience in the financial markets. A big round of applause for him. I think uh, the theme is very good, how to get rich. No beating around the bush, just tell us how to become rich, how to create wealth. So I think two ways you can create wealth. One, you invest in your career, you have a day job, you work for a company, you work for a bank, you have your own business. So you are putting your labor there, you are, you are putting your own efforts there. So that is one way to become rich. We are not going to talk about that. The second is, whatever money you are saving, you are investing. So your money is working for you. I think we are going to talk about that. Within that also, either you are investing in physical assets, which is real estate, gold, and the second is financial assets. So today I think, I personally feel that financial asset is the key and we are going to talk more about financial assets and within that we are going to talk about stock markets, we are going to talk about equity market. For that, what we should know? We should first look at India as an investment destination because we are going to invest money in Indian equities, how India is looking. And then within India, what sectors, what are the opportunities, we have to get into that. So I think I'm starting with demonetization. Why? Because first time we have seen 
that the government has taken an economic bet and has been rewarded. So if you look at the UP election results and the kind of mandate government got, I think that is the proof that now people are going to reward if you talk economic sense, if you talk development, which is a great news for the country, which is a great news for the markets. So there was a parallel economy. So part of that has come into the organized market. There are more people who will be paying taxes. So all those organized and listed players will get stronger because some of the inefficient players will go out. That will help the stock market. Another problem for all these years was that government was not able to identify the poor. If they wanted to give subsidies, most of that was getting leaked. It was not reaching to the intended beneficiary. So government talked about digitizing the IDs, which is Aadhaar. So today, more than 111 crore people have got the Aadhaar cards. That coupled with the mobile revolution, and finally, Jandhan account, financial inclusion, that money is now going to the beneficiary and that too in his or her bank account. The money which was first, it was not reaching to them. And second, even if it was reaching, they were not able to spend it wisely. They were immediately spending it, some consumption, keeping under their pillow, doing all kinds of things. Now that money is sitting in a bank account and thousands of crores of rupees are already there. So at some point of time, that money will flow into equity market, maybe in small SIPs. It will take some time, but we are going there. Government is taking many steps to ease the business community, to ease the processes, to get them the benefit of faster implementation, so we have improved on this ease of doing business index, although a little bit. There is another index called cost, the competitiveness, where we have inched much higher. So there are a lot of efforts being done. And finally, GST, which is the reform of the decade. There are 13 taxes which will go. There will be a single tax from 1st July. So you will not see the lines at the check nakas. Earlier, 30 to 40 percent of the time, people were spending at the Cheknaka and not driving the trucks, the drivers. So what is happening around the world? See, whatever affects our market, we have to look at that. The other countries are being protectionist. There is a lot of protectionism in the world. We saw what happened in Brexit. They wanted to save their jobs. Their immigration laws are already very strict. Then we, we saw what happened in US. Hire American, buy American, and a whole lot of things are happening. Our IT sector is worried. Our pharma sector is worried. So all those worries are there. And that may happen in France also. We don't know. There are elections in next month, April or May, first week. So I think world is getting into that kind of a mode. What we have to look at, what India is doing. In India, it is the reverse process. We are inviting people. We are saying, come here and manufacture. So it is becoming a global hub for autos. We are going to manufacture our defense uh, things here. So we are welcoming. There is a huge focus on infrastructure. If you look at the kind of allocation, around 4 lakh crore in this budget, out of that 1.5 lakh crore for railways, some 60,000 crore in for, for NHAI building roads, there will be more airports, more bridges, more seaports. So I think all that is happening. So that will give you a lot of opportunities in many companies who are getting into these things. 
Then there is a digitization push. We have all seen demonetization accelerated that push. So we could see during that time that even a fruit vendor had a Paytm board. Mo most people use the cards. And even now the remonetization has happened. People are very comfortable using debit card, credit card, UPI, Paytm. So all this is happening. So that's a, that's a great story. And we will see the benefit over a long period of time. Look at macros. We are the fastest growing country in the world. In spite of whatever happened in Q3, everybody was worried. And we got a GDP number of 7. Once the GST is implemented, so what we have seen across the world, wherever GST is implemented, after one or two years, the GDP has gone up by 100, 150 basis points. So we are inching towards a double digit number as far as the growth is concerned. So that will obviously open many doors for us. If you look at India's forex reserves, so in 91 we had one week of import money left, and now we have 10 months of import money that you can pay the bills for the next 10 months. So around $360 billion reserves. If you look at fiscal deficit, it is under control. Government is working prudently. The NK Singh committee gave them some leeway between 3 to 3.5, so around 3.2. FIIs are happy, rating agencies are happy if, if we maintain that. If you look at CPI, very much under control. So we, we never talked about 3%, 3.5%, 3.85% uh, number, but now that is happening. There may be base effect, it may move to 4.5 or whatever, but it is under control. So nothing to worry. Apart from that, if you look at crude oil under, under control, if you look at interest rates going down. So I think this is another story which is playing in India. We are going to get a demographic dividend in this country. There are only 6% people who are above 65 years of age. And there are 29% of the people which are below 14 years. There is no other country in the world this kind of demographics. So next two decades belong to India. Next two decades, we will have the most productive population in the country. I think after five years, the average age of Indian will be, let's say, 29 years, and average age of Chinese will be 37 years, and average age of a Japanese will be 48 years. So just look at the benefit. How it is going to benefit? These people are going to consume. These people are going to take loans. So there are 70 crore rural consumers in India. There are six and a half lakh villages in India. And there are 70 crore rural consumers, which is equivalent to the entire Europe population. There are 50 crore, that is another cut. There's a 50 crore young consumers. If you add Brazil, Russia, Germany, UK, all these four countries. So these young people nowadays, if you, if you look at a millennial, they want to buy a home immediately. Borrowing is not a taboo. Day one, they take a credit card and start spending. So they are going to spend money, they are going to take loans, they are going to consume things. So I think this is huge opportunity. So we have to look at entire spectrum. If you have to become rich, you should know where the people going to spend money. And then there is a middle class consumer who is, uh, uh, who is starting his family or started his family. So there will be money spent on education. There will be money spent on insurance because suddenly you find the need to go for insurance. So insurance companies are going to benefit. And these people are sorted. They don't have much debt. Again, they are going to spend more. So, so if, you, if you look at the discretionary spend on food, on health care, on other uh, things, So I think this is another uh, slide which should uh, be seen very properly. So if you look at uh, roadways, we have only 21,000 kilometer. Look at US and look at China. So they are four times, far, five times more than you. So look at the opportunity. What I am trying to tell you, look at the opportunity because we are the fastest growing, we are doing well. And if we have to reach somewhere close to them, how many companies are going to benefit? Because there will be corporates who will be doing this. So there are, there are uh, motor vehicles which is 18 per thousand and look at uh, China and uh, don't even look at US, 44 times. So let us go towards China first. 
So still with this kind of vehicle, we had traffic jams everywhere. So we have to build more roads. So there is going to be more money spent on infra. So there are two stories. You are going to get money in the auto sector and you are going to get money in the road sector or uh, infrastructure. Number of airports, again, huge, huge disparity, waterways. So I think we can go on and on on this kind of parameters. So these are only four I thought I should select and show it to you. So infrastructure, there is a huge rise in award, NHAI is getting, so its graph is going up. So if, if, if you look at the road being built every day, so it is I think 19, it is written here, but latest data is 22 kilometer of road being built every day. Highways, huge opportunity. Defense, we are importing around 60% of our requirement. I think it should halve in the next five years. So again, that means more company. So you know the companies, maybe when, when you, you read every day, you know which company is doing what. So, but look at the overall opportunity size here. FMCG, again, the same story. Your per capita income is growing, more and more people are going to spend money and the rural is a major major uh, base here so there are ultra rich obviously but consumption story will be primarily middle class rural class so you know again you know the companies so so you you start observing which which companies oil people are using which companies biscuit you are eating which companies uh, soap you are using so so you know what is happening around you so there are huge opportunity in fmcg and consumer durable Housing finance company, again, I think everybody is talking about this. These companies have rewarded so well. Look at the shortage, around 4.4 crore in rural housing and around 2 crore in urban housing. And we are talking about housing for all in 2022. And if you look at the overall book of the banks, it is 10, 12% in lower digits. So there is a huge, huge scope. So infra is going to benefit within that. Uh, all these companies also will get benefit. Uh, it, so see the related companies, even the cement companies will benefit. So if this is going to be built, there are going to be huge opportunities. So many of the housing companies have already started rallying and, and in the coming years it will continue to happen. Auto ancillary is a great story. So in India we always talked about, if you talked about export opportunities, primarily IT and pharma. So IT exports around 65% of the uh, total uh, out, uh, whatever they, they produce or whatever is the total sales. If you look at pharma, it is around 35% which is export. If you look at auto, it is right now at around 15%. But I think here is a great story because we have reached a stage where the quality and efficiency of Indian auto industry is well accepted. So more and more global auto majors, they are setting up hubs in India now. So last year around 2.5 crore cars were made, out of that around 15, 20% were uh, exported. So small car market we are exploding, we are sending to so many nations now. And all the auto ancillary companies also benefit, because auto ancillary companies have benefit, they also supply to export market, so all those Hondas and Fords which are not listed in India and they supply to your Marutis and other companies which are listed in India. So they have the twin advantage. So these companies are going to benefit more than the OEM, what we call. So ancillaries even we are more bullish. So there are there are a lot of opportunities. So in auto ancillaries there are there are companies specializing in lights, specializing in engines, specializing in brakes, specializing in there are five, six kind of different niche products. And there are these companies have market share of forty percent, fifty percent, and and I think uh, we have huge, huge story there. Then textile industry. I think this is what we have started talking at Texas Direct now. Uh, what we are saying is that if you look at China, which is the leader as of now, the exports are falling in the last two, three years because the wages have been increased in the last two years. If you look at the labor cost there, so there is a huge differential being built uh, if you look at India and China. If you look at even other uh, factors like power and lending rate and water cost. So we are going to get a huge opportunity in textile and we can see the green shoots. Because this textile business is moving from different countries and if 1950s it was Northern America, then it went to Japan, then it went to Hong Kong, then it came to China from 
90s onwards. And now, if you look at their negative trend, so India is going to benefit. Although there are other countries like Bangladesh, Cambodia, Vietnam, but obviously the quality issues may be there and the comfort level of European companies and American companies will be more with the Indian companies. So I think we are going to benefit more. And, I, I, and I, we are very, very positive and there are very few companies here who are integrated. So we are not talking about the branded uh, products, the companies who are setting up retail showrooms. We are talking about before that because, because there is a stage when the cotton fiber becomes yarn, become gray fiber, become processed, and then finally it become a garment. That entire chain, that integrated players are there. There are players in uh, parts of uh, Coimbatore and Tirupati and all that. And, and these companies are going to benefit hugely because if you start around one and a half dollar if you are investing, and the garment when it comes, it, it is around 11 or 12 dollars. So the kind of margin these people uh, generate, I think they, there, there is a story. Not because uh, then people set up retail and all, then sometime they lose money. So we, we have a lot of spaces here. Now, uh, before I start that, so what I'm saying is there are a lot of opportunities. In, still in India, only 3% of the people invest money in equity. So I keep wondering why people don't invest in equity. When we have seen 1978, the index was 100, now it is 29,000 or 30,000 almost. 300 times why people are still getting attached to other asset classes which are not productive. So somewhere it has to do with our own psyche, our own psychology. So I always talk about investor psychology. So I am going to give you five principles and I am going to take help from yoga. And this is going to be the, my last slide. But keep it, keep it with you. Maybe you can forget about sectors and stocks I have not spoken. So. Because these things can keep changing. After five years, some other sector will come and something else will come. But these five principles will not only help you in your day-to-day -day life, but also in your investing life. And this is a shlok from Patanjali, from Yoga Sutra, which says, Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Dvesha, Abhinavesha. The first is Avidya. That is lack of knowledge or ignorance. So if you don't have knowledge, how are you going to invest money? You have to know. So whatever I told you, all these things, maybe some of you may not be knowing that. Now you know that. So I think this knowledge is going to help. So I think that is the main klesha. So this klesha you have to minimize. You will not know all, but at least you can minimize your ignorance. So you can, you can know more about companies, read more about sectors, read more about companies. The second is asmita, which is ego. So in all bull markets, people think now, now there is a new high, so people have made money in the last five days or ten days, and they are saying, now I can make money. Some of people are saying, chalo, I can retire, and it, it's so easy to make money, because he invested in one or two companies, and that has doubled or 40%, 30% return he has got. So I think you should never get that, because one, one saying I will tell you, just try to understand, the knowledge of your ego is knowledge, and ego of your knowledge is ego. So leave your ego, minimize your ego, if you don't know, how to read a balance sheet, go to an expert, ask him, if you don't know what, what this company is doing, you don't know the business, there are so many financial advisors. Obviously, I will say you can come to Access Direct, but what I am saying is go to a person who can give you some inputs. There is no shame. Your own money, your hard-earned money you are investing. Just invest, just don't invest on hearsay. That somebody said, yeah, double ho jayega, aap le lije. Don't do that. Third is attachment. This is again, you have to minimize this. Because people have attachment towards their, either an asset class, I would love this real estate, I will not buy this So there are problems, stamp duty, there are problems, tenant, there are problems about repair, there are problems about when he wants to sell, he will not get a price, but he will never sell that house. And all his entire money is, he is invested in all houses. And they suffer. So don't do asset allocation. Nah? You can have one house, maybe two houses. You can't put entire money. People love gold. People love jewelry. They don't want to leave that. They, they don't look at financial assets. Even within the stock, people love a particular stock. They want to keep that stock. The financials have been bad. The promoters are doing all kind of uh, ulta pulta things. But this person will not sell that because he loves that stock. We have seen, we every day meet such people. I have seen a company chairman who is not going to
demat his physical share because his name was printed there. He has so much attachment with that piece of paper. Unless he demat, how he's going to sell and make money? So attachment. So that's what they say, na. That 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 whatever you suffer, the the root cause is attachment. So minimize this. At least come out of that attachment and look at other asset classes. The fourth is aversion, which is basically you don't like stock market. You hate stock market. People say no, no share bazaar nahi. Gambling hai because somebody has lost money. Somebody was always selling in winners and keeping his uh, losers as part of his long term portfolio. He doesn't like the stock market, so so he he says no stock market se nahi karna. And once he lost money in 92, 2000, 2008, never invested again. Please don't do that. And finally, fear. That is, you always that is fear of loss. Hundred will become ninety sometime. You are investing in equity. Hundred will become hundred twenty. But if when it becomes ninety, you cry. When it becomes hundred twenty, say, "Thik hai, I invested. I should get that money." So loss aversion. So I think this is this is really bad. Equity is a risky asset class. It will never give you linear return. Sometime you will win, sometime you will lose. But if you are winning more than losing. So over a period of time, if somebody has invested only in Nifty or a Sensex, he has got his money 300 times. Over a longer period, he will never lose money in equity. I think these are the punch klesha which has been given by Patanjali 2000 year back. So we always look at Warren Buffett, greed and fear is bad, and so many things. But our own gurus, our own scripture also talk about this. And these are the five things. If you if you look at any of your problem, you will relate with any of this one of these five. So I think keep this principle. Be very strong mentally, so that three percent becomes six percent. So three percent of people now invest. Now the six percent people should invest. That will be doubling it. So I think I should stop here. Thank you very much. And maybe in the Q and A session we can talk. To you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon, for uh, laying before us the opportunities that lay in India in a tumultuous world and giving us the sectors which are likely to benefit. But what was most enriching was how he connected it with our own philosophy. And also, on a lighter note, it was ironic that you spoke about FMCG and connected it to Patanjali in your last segment. But uh, let's move on. Our next guest, you know her as a familiar face on our channel. She's the joint MD of Prabhu Das Leela Dar. She's got almost uh, three decades of experience in the equities markets and has been awarded. by various institutions for her expertise in the expertise markets uh, and uh, please please put your hands together for amisha bora the joint md of prabhudas leela dar thank you so much you know after what mr arun thukral said there is very little which is left for me to advise and say he has covered a lot of things and it was really very enriching i will try and focus on two things uh one is how do i see what has been happening in india from the point of view straight of the markets because at these levels the key fear or key question everyone has is the fear of height the fear of new high and is it a sustainable level that we are at or it's like last time which he mentioned that we are here from here again the slide back to 7500 8000 and then we keep rotating around over here my my point of view here is that we are on a much steadier wicket i will also of course include some of the key problems that are still not addressed internally by india and we can face some problems because of that but still why do i think that we are on a steadier long term structural transformation quickly i will cover on that so so we believe that the reforms this time a number of that which mr tukral mentioned including demonetization and gst etc are transformational and they are not just you know one incremental step they are cultural also and it will lead us to a complete virtuous cycle how a virtuous cycle 
Inside statistics, I am not mentioning, but I am just trying to cover one point here, that whenever we used to meet over so many years, any corporate mid-size, the first advice that we used to give is, in last 15, 20 years, keep showing proper profits. As you show profits in your book, your ability to draw funds from banks, financial investors increases. The thing which was available to corporates, I think over next five years, will be available to individuals which were not in the net of the financial services industry only, be it by banks, be it by NBFCs, and with simultaneously digitization happening, increasing the reach of all the financial institution, a simple saloon owner also, as he starts accepting money by credit cards, he will start showing in his monthly bank statement increasing or steady revenue, which can lend, which can lead him to one of the NBFCs or financial uh, institution lending him and thereby increasing his power of growth and consumption. So one of the key things which I think which is going to happen apart from huge growth in infrastructure and so on and so forth is consumption. And that consumption-led growth itself will help us in increasing our corporate earnings. So some of you who are very familiar with the markets know that the biggest complaint the bears on the street have, have been telling is there are no earnings growth. Last three years, the earnings have been flat. Markets are going up. So markets are at a much higher multiple than it should have been at this time uh, looking at the earnings growth. The low earnings growth, the low credit growth in the system, the banks in the heydays of 2003 to 2008 used to have something like 15, 18, and 20 percent credit growth. Today, that credit growth has come down to just 5 to 6 percent, which means there is no more demand. Which segment which is growing within this credit growth is just retail. The private sector spending is not growing at all. So we are saying that knowing this as a key fact, which is still not being sorted out, the underlying reason is still the capacity utilization broadly of the Indian industry is about 65-70%. It's only when you start hitting 75-80% that you start planning your next round of investments. Are we going to go there? Or because of so many reasons, be it of imports, be it of low domestic demand, that the utilization will not increase over next three years. So let me just take up a few things which I believe, while the government has done a lot of things apparently for poors, they have also given a lot of heed to the industry, starting with the coal auction and iron ore uh, streamlining. Because if you remember, iron ore industry was stuck. There was no production happening. That mess has been sorted out. On the top of it, we gave minimum economic price to steel industry. With that, most of the steel plants now are able to operate at a much better utilization and are starting to earn profits. Same has happened with sugar industry. Sugar industry was in complete doldrums. They were not even able to pay to the farmers. So the whole chain was impacted till the farm. With, of course, slightly better realizations and an intervention through little credit, that industry has also been taken out. He just mentioned about textile. Textile, they got additional benefit of about 3.9% in interest subvention, because of which now we are more competitive to uh, compete with China in global export markets. Smaller industries also, for example, steamless tubes and pipes industry, we were getting imports at 25% below our cost of production, and that's how the utilization of the industry had just gone down to about 15, 16%. We have recently, uh, in last two months, come up with a five-year structure of minimum import price, which now 
makes us believe that the industry will bounce back to 75 to 80 percent utilization because we are importing 60 percent of our uh, need. There is a domestic demand, but there was no support. So while the world is going towards a bit of protectionism, I believe that we are also very watchful, vigilant as a country to give the required protection to our own industry. And with that, you know, one of the key reasons or problems which we faced was our entire banking industry was settled with bad assets. One on infrastructure side, the other on the industry side. And while the overall income of the banks were increasing, their provisions were increasing many fold, leading to reduction in their profits. But as one by one industries come out of their problems, it's very much possible that the banks, which reflects the overall economy in their balance sheet, starts bouncing back on their health and the health of their uh, asset quality. So one of the key things which uh, we think the catalyst for earnings growth will be operating leverage, which means when you don't invest more, but the same plant or the same machinery starts making more, it usually reflects in your bottom line. Next, of course, is market share gain. As what has been mentioned uh, time and again, GST is one of the most important reforms in the decade, but which creates a level playing field. A level playing field between an organized and unorganized, and you cannot give substandard quality by not paying tax. If you start paying tax, a lot of industries within domestic plywood industry, tiles industry, auto, ancillary industry, and many more will start coming into level playing. They will start grabbing market share. They will have more than market growth uh, and any which way they are better quality. So both in terms will benefit. And the third most important is we have gone through a period of last, you can say, five years or more where the cost of capital was very high. Interest rates were so high that that itself was a big deterrent. With the reduction in interest rate and final pass through to the industry, the cost of capital will come down. Industry will A, start making money, B, paying less interest, and in turn showing much better profitability and ability to repay to banks. With this cycle turning, we believe that the key to uh, any market sustenance and performance over medium term, that's the earnings growth in, in the period 18, 19, 20, that is the three years, will start coming back and will keep surprising us. Last three to four financial years, it has been completely evading us, starting with a complete commodity collapse where a large oil and steel companies started showing stock losses. Further, reflecting into banks' balance sheet by way of huge provisions and NPAs. So their profitability got impacted. And then we also had the demonetization. So the final season, when with very good re uh, monsoon, we were expecting good numbers to turn out. We have been put behind a bit, but once again, it uh, lays the stage for a better tomorrow. So if you just uh, see, we believe that the largest weightage in the Nifty, I believe this is a Nifty Millionaire Club, so they better know how is the composition of Nifty is, the largest weightage in the Nifty is of banking and financial, almost around 30%. And within that, some of the large private sector and the largest public sector bank had a major issue with their profitability. If they just come back a bit, it will show a good 30-35% bottom line growth in that sector. Now, all that cumulating into the nifty EPS of closer to 500. In case we see how is that nifty valued is it very high compared to our last 10 years historic valuation the chart shows that we are not in a territory which is seen as a bubble territory or a territory where there is huge risk five to seven percent correction in a strong uh, in a rising markets are always welcome to accommodate new players new investors or to make the base sound. And that cannot be ruled out. But this shows that we are not in any major uh, bubble territory as of now. Uh, and there are a lot of levers in the economy 
macro being stable for the overall earnings growth and the corporate earnings to grow. The key risk, uh, if at all, are the volatility which keeps coming because of some or other global events. And the two global things to watch for could be, A, of course, China, because being one of the largest uh, economy and going through a huge slowdown, the fear of a hard landing always keeps a question mark at the back of our mind. And the second is uh, also mentioned a lot of political action is uh, set for Europe this year, including in Germany, France, and that may keep those opportunities of huge volatility in our structurally good story, uh, which is what the base has been created. Also, a GST transition can lead to a bit of uh, adjustment, slowdown, and the earnings for one or two quarters may still take time before they go into a very smooth growth territory. Uh, some of the themes uh, which we as a research house has been liking are, of course, in and around domestic consumption. We think that, as mentioned by Mr. Tupral, a lot of young and working class population now enabled by opportunities of earnings as well as loan or the borrowing will have huge impetus for domestic consumption. Of course, GST will give a shift from unorganized to organized. Affordable housing being the key theme, both the financials as well as, I believe, the constructor where nobody looks at the real estate stock at the moment, but I feel over the next two years, they will also come back to life. Defense has taken a lot of time despite the promise of make in India. But once again, it is at the stage where action will be seen over the next two, three years. And first action will be in the order books, which is what market will start believing it a little more strongly. So defense also, agri reforms, and last but not the least, lifestyle. Because of the increasing reach of media, be it through uh, digital mediums or otherwise, the lifestyle uh, related sectors and the urge will continue to be one of the very dominant sector and uh, uh, growth arena. Uh, very briefly, uh, with all the due disclosures, that these are some of our house uh, recommendations and picked up based on the themes that we think are going to play out over next uh, uh, couple of years and more. We have been talking about it. My house, my, uh, my team, and my clients would be invested in some of these stocks, so please take care of the disclosures. But just to touch upon some of these, these are some of the stories which are structural or sustainable, like Britannia, where the actual selling points in India for retail is about 4.5 million. They have touched close to about 1.5, 1.6, and they aggressively plan to increase their distribution network in the heart of India, which is North and Central India, which is where we think they will keep gaining market share. So we think structurally it's a very good story. This is one of the few food items which is available at two rupees, five rupees, three rupees price point also. So which is where it will keep having a lot of uh, increase in volume driven increase in demand and uh, their earnings. Of course, there is this Jindal Steel and Power, which has gone through a huge rough patch in the last five years. Capacities were there, debt got accumulated, but they could not quite produce enough and on the production earn enough. Now, with rising production and domestic demand, as also better prices, we think it will stay the smart turnaround in their earnings and numbers. SBI, PSU Bank, all are thrown upon this, and everybody swears by private banks. We also love private bank. HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank are amongst our top picks. But we think that at this point of time, the kind of lead that even SBI being a PSU has taken in digitization and the fact that they are available at a very competitive valuation compared to the kind of subsidiary and value that they have created, they will come out of this little asset quality issues sooner 
and as we resolve that as a country, they will be one of the big beneficiaries of that. Larsen, of course, is one of the key infrastructure play and in defense also, they stand a very good chance of uh, getting good growth in orders and execution. Some of the other in mid-caps that we touch upon, Rallis, a very well-known name from the House of Tatas, but, uh, but in the case of last year's monsoon and as we expect the monsoon even this year is predicted to be reasonably uh, good because of the base level in water b it's a zero net cash company with 20 percent plus roe return on equity and 20 percent plus growth so we think that this kind of combinations when companies start throwing free cash and still grow are ones which markets and investors really start liking it a lot Thyrocare is a very new name. I don't know how many of you all are aware in terms of its internals, but this is one of diagnostic industries, one which we think will have huge growth, not for one year, three years, but we believe for more than a decade, they will continue to grow as a segment and industry by more than 20 to 25 percent. And this is a, uh, you know, this company sets the barometer in terms of cost and price in the industry so they are the cost leaders and they have created a model which is where they have been giving these services at a much affordable price the company's stated policy is that apart from capex which cannot be more than 30 to 40 percent of their net earnings they will distribute balance as dividend so i think these kind of once again companies which have huge sustainable growth and the shareholder friendly policies will continue to be in favor uh, we are a logistic is one of the companies which is into the segment of logistics and because of gst we believe their efficiencies will improve a lot and once again the move from unorganized to organized will benefit these are the few which i picked up out of our research I hope this is of use, and once again I request, please take all this with a disclaimer that my house, uh, as a PL as a house, my investors and myself can have investments in this. Thank you so much. research stocks but now getting micro you've seen him as our very own market wala you've seen him heard him on our channel and you know him as the man who picked a few gems like quality itd cementation tasty bite eatables all of them have been multi baggers so let's put your hands together for our very own prakash diwan Thanks, thanks, Mangalam. Thanks, Reema. Uh, you know, when, when I got to know, I've, I've done this Get Rich show once earlier as well, and that too was in a college. The first one, in fact, in the series. Uh, so it was more education. When I got to know this is Nifty Millionaires, I said the program should have been Get Richer. So you, know, you can't be calling it Get Rich anymore. So, so what I've done is, uh, I don't think you, all of you need too much of Gyan. Uh, you're fairly well conversant with uh, making money and I, I know you guys trade a lot because uh, that's what the group was created for, right? Is, is it a trading group or an investing group? That still doesn't say anything. Yeah. So, 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 you know, I know trading is tough. A lot of people love to, you know, think that uh, trading could be fun, can make a lot of money. Uh, but what's even tougher than trading, I can tell you, is investing while you are trading also. You know, that, that's, it's like, uh, in, in, in a very simple way, the guy who grows vegetables usually doesn't grow very big trees. You know, he's, he's used to, kheti kya, do hafte mein, nikala, becha, bada ped banane ke patience nahi rehti hai. So, you know, that balancing is very tough. So what I thought I'll do is, in, in terms of my slideshow uh, presentation was, I can see the slideshow, so just tell me if it's on. 
Yeah, okay. So I've kept a very simple uh, presentation. Uh, and the whole idea is that we keep on knowing that what we do in terms of what Arun talked about, asset classes, equity is the best. All of us know. So if you still have doubts, please take them out after this uh, two hours that you spend here. Go and allocate some money, decent money to equity. Whether you do it through the mutual fund route, you do it directly, doesn't matter. But you have to have investments in equities. There is no way you can get rich without equity on your portfolio. Of course, there's going to be risk involved. You know, it's not something so easy, um, doesn't come without taking on the risk. Everything has a risk. Sir. There's, there's no, nothing in life which I think uh, there's no risk. The only thing you can do about risk is you can probably try and manage it, not completely take it out of the system. It's like, you know, we have children who go to school. Uh, uh, initially, we, we are very happy when the child starts growing, saying, ye bada okay doctor banega, you know, ye bada okay so and so banega. And he fails or struggles in a particular subject in the next test. Do you take him out of school? Do you stop paying fees saying, nah, you failed, I, you, I thought you'll become a doctor, uh, let me stop paying fees and wasting money. There was equities like that. You might have a couple of bad calls, you might have some hiccups once in a while, you might have a bad market, but that doesn't mean you stop investing. And in a very simple way, the only way actually to get over risk is a longer term orientation. The longer you think, plan and act, risk is out. Or, or minimize. I wouldn't say it's out, as I said earlier, but it gets. So there's no other formula. How do you take risk out of the system? You can only do it by risking. Now coming to let's get richer. Uh, you know, there is this whole very common concept of value that we keep on talking about. It's become very fashionable reading Warren Buffett, Charlie Bunger, and saying, oh, value investing. You know, uh, I don't understand that either right now. I'm still learning and uh, trying to. But what is what is a simple logic that you should buy at value and what is price? What do you think is value? Value and what is the difference between value and price according to you? In simple terms, if I have asked people, they said price is what you pay, value, value is what you get, right? Women know that. You go into a store and you first thing do is say sale, 50% off. That's where you see value, right? So anything that's available at a listing is value. So this is this is exactly what it tells you. Value investing is more to do with the company's intrinsic nature and, and what you think is accordable to it. Whereas price is something which is more to do with other things. It's, it's what the market is willing to pay for. Don't mix the two things. And if you can, it takes a few years to understand this, but if you can make out the difference between these two, it becomes much simpler. Because value is typically driven by things like your cash flows, you know, various parameters, growth, risk, whereas price is nothing but a function of simple demand and supply. When people pay a particular price for a recent stock exchange uh, business that got listed, you know, we were asking, you know, on that day of listing, it went to a, you know what it went to, some 1200 bucks, where was it, 1200 plus. And a lot of people were raising doubts, saying, is it worth 1200 But the demand was such. Everybody wanted a piece of it, right? I mean, they kya hoga, DMAT ka listing hoga next week. The demand is such. Value, we'll come to know about it later, because the first time that we are getting introduced to that thing. Of course, it has tremendous value. I'm not taking that away, but don't mix the two things. So when somebody comes and tells you, okay, what system is milra hai, probably it deserves to be sasta. So that doesn't mean, you know, you get caught into it saying, ha, dasar rupay ka mil raha hai, le lo. Whereas value takes time to figure out, you need a lot of homework, and as Arun said, you would need help from maybe a specialist. I mean, I'm not that, I'm trying to secure my job, but uh, you, you will need to watch CNBC regularly and uh, figure that out. And the market usually doesn't give the right price to what is the right value. There's always a mismatch, because it's perception. Market is comprised of millions of people who possibly have different ideas, different views, and that's where the opportunity lies. So if you can identify this gap, there's a lot of money to be made. Right? Do you agree to this? So all you have to do is figure out how to identify this gap. That's all. Not bother about anything else. And it's quite simple, actually, because I can tell you it doesn't need too much of 
academic qualifications. It needs a little bit of experience and hard work, but not much. Very simple. If you think that a company is good, and if the market also perceives this to be good, what do you do? You also think it's good, great value. Market has put a price which is great. It thinks it's a good company business to own. Just ignore it because paisa nahi banega. Market ko bhi malum hai, aapko bhi malum hai. But if you feel the company is good and the market feels it's bad, right? So what do you do? There is opportunity. You go and buy. And, and there's lots which happen. So in the first example, if you see, Consensus, this thing, Maruti is a great buy. Yes, Maruti at 4800 was a great buy when the market didn't like it. And for no apparent reason. But Maruti at 6200, you think you can make money? Yes, you may, but it's not a great opportunity. So there's never a company which is good or bad. It's a price at which you are talking about. You, you could take, you know, Amisha mentioned HDFC, HDFC Bank. HDFC was closer to 1000 bucks just about a few months back. Nobody liked it. No, no, growth is tough, you know, it cannot, it's got a lot of baggage, a lot of balance sheet. It's good in 1400. So, there's no more opportunity. You cannot make that kind of money. Yes, bank. Superb case. QIP came, sorry, it's cancelled. It's gone. It's not good. It's not good. Somebody came up with a report for 660 as a target that day. Saying it will lose its fee-based franchise, this, that, all of that happened. Today it's being recommended as, as, at a target price of 1600 or 1800 or whatever. So the market will always tend to do that. And please understand, when people come together, they make more sillier mistakes. So the market will give you that opportunity. We will also make a mistake if we think along with the market. It doesn't really, you know, it's not so difficult. You look at a company and you think it's bad, it's not doing well, but the market thinks it's damn good. Happens all the time, right? You don't like a company. Most people who are value investors are skeptics. Kuch bhi pasand nahi aata usko. Nahi yaar, isme to management ka problem hai. Nahi yaar, isne to abhi tak kuch kiya hi nahi hai. But the market is saying, nahi nahi, daba ke lo, ye bahut acha chalega. It's super, iska aisa hai, waisa hai, bahut kuch hota hai. Look at paper stocks. Suddenly everybody is after paper. Everybody wants to buy some paper company. Saying which is, abhi kaun sa acha hai paper mein? Sugar. Sugar run up ho gaya. Disbelievers, nahi nahi, nahi chalega. Second run up, it's been a lot more. Third run up, it's been a lot more. Now people are talking, sugar is a lot of shortage in the world. Now we're going to see something else. So, you know, the market has suddenly started falling in love with these stocks. Whereas you are not convinced, saying that they are overpriced. Just don't worry. If you have it, sell it. If you don't have it, you really can't do much. I'm not recommending shorting or something. But you could avoid that. The same thing is going to happen selectively to every good sector. Mutual, uh, uh, MFIs, microfinance institutions are great play, but all companies within that don't qualify to be a buy. Please understand that, right? So you could, you could have a sector which is as thakela as fertilizer, and you would still find winners in that. Or you could have a roaring sector like automobiles and auto ancillaries, but you'll have some lagard there. So don't go by just the sectoral trends and think that you are in the right sector because people tend to look which is available cheap. I, have come, I, I get so many emails saying, Sir, auto ancillary, you have told me, but it's very expensive. Tell me something about 10-20 rupees. I mean, he's convinced. I'm very convinced that auto ancillary will do well, but give me something which is 20 rupees, 30 rupees, under 50 will go. I mean, this is no way you buy, no? Right? So, it, it, you know, it, it has to be. If you want to buy a case, it will get to the gram, to the tole. If you want to buy a case, it will get to the quintal. But you don't eat it. You don't eat it. What is the difference between it? But that, that's where it's, it's going to change. So if you feel, there's another segment, which is very often, you feel the company is bad. Market also says, nothing doing, it's not going to work out. Just avoid it. There's nothing much you can do. So telecom is in that spot. At least some of the companies like Bharti and all have been, you know, struggling in that slot. Reema is here, so she'll, she'll be able to guide us more on this. But these stocks you just have to ignore for the timing because you don't find value. Market is also not finding great value in that. Just don't worry about it. So it's as simple. Thinking independently of the market is where wealth will get created, sir. Let me leave you with that. Now that you've got richer, you also need to stay rich, right? And that's where preservation of capital comes in. Most of us struggle at this stage. I know it's a good stage to be in once you become rich. So then I'll manage. 
So just, just remember to focus on a few simple things. People keep on wondering and reading up and struggling and attending courses saying how to analyze a stock. Trust me, that is not the expertise. The key lies in identifying which stock to analyze. You could become a gold medalist CA. That doesn't make you qualified to be the richest investor in town, right? Because you could analyze the stock, but you didn't know which stock to analyze, so you analyze something else. Same way, it goes for this. If you are a very simple investor who started off, and you're looking at, let's say, uh, identifying uh, what to buy, you've struggled quite a bit, figured out, spoken to a lot of so-called experts, you are convinced, saying, hey, lene ka hai. We, we get to know about it, right? A lot of good investors you know tell you that you buy this, keep it for the long term. But kitna liya? 1% of the portfolio. You know, 50 lakh ke portfolio mein apanne kitna liya? Lakh rupay ka. 2% liya. Chhod diya. Nahi yaar, abhi malum nahi na chalega ke nahi. Isse bola to hai. Arre bola hai to usko daba ke lo. Agar convinced ho aap, aur achhi cheez hai, to you figure out how much to buy, not what to buy. What to buy is 20 item, 25 item, not the whole market. We keep on struggling even after we've identified 20 stocks. So, good, acha batao na. 20 stocks already hai, and 20 nahi, 700 bhi hai. But we are still looking for this thing more. If we think more stocks will help you make more money, it doesn't. Don't try to time the market if you want to stay rich. Trust me, market is at 9200, Sensex at 30,000. How does it matter? You're buying the stock. You're buying a story which may or may not have done well. And it's important to focus on how long you stay invested. Again, this is what Arun was saying, long term, you have that orientation, it will make you money. This is what everybody talks about. So timing is out of the way. It's time in the market that you need to focus on. I'll just tell you two or three good stocks that I think are turning around because the sector is turning around. Amisha mentioned infra in our country is undergoing or likely to undergo a sea change for the simple reason that the government is Focus on to bringing change in the lives of people, right? Especially rural and urban infrastructure, sanitation. Look at companies like Dredging Corporation. It's already done very well, but don't bother. It can still do well. Look at companies like Feders Lloyd, which is a consumption theme. It's also into the railways. It's looking at railway air conditioning transformation for a lot of coaches. Look at a company called J. Kumar. There's a company called PNC Infratech, which is very UP-centered. Right? They have so many things. When you hear about a 4,000 crore order for Varanasi, um, uh, uh, announcement for the Varanasi connectivity, why is it a surprise? It was bound to happen. Namami Gange as a project has 19,000 crores which was identified in the next few years. But the central government was not spending that money because the state government was not in sync. Things have changed. So if Namami Gange, if you read up on Namami Gange, you'll realize there are two or three very large components, urban sanitation, irrigation, and inland transportation, water transportation. And you'll have enough names to feature in that. That's the opportunity you need to look at. The market is not yet looking at it. Once everything goes up, fill up re-rating and all that will be talked about. So make your money with these simple things. Uh, pharma is down and out. Market doesn't like it right now. Too much of US FDA, but there used to be US FDA inspections and problem announcements. Today you are seeing more and more EIRs and approvals coming through. It's still US FDA in the news, but for the right reasons. I think pharma is going to be a huge turnaround. Look at some of those companies which have a balanced portfolio like Unichem Labs or something which doesn't do all exports. Alchem, it's a lot of India focused business as well. They're growing very good pedigree. So seek things out when others are not. You know, focus. IT could happen the same way. I mean, maybe it'll take a while, but, uh, you know, some select companies could go the same way after a while. So there's enough and more to get rich, get richer, and stay rich. Uh, if we'll take more in the Q&A. If you have any questions, you can write to me. Thank you so much for being patient enough. Thank you, Prakash, Arun, as well as Amisha. We're all wiser when we get to the trading uh, floor on uh, Monday morning. And we've covered a lot of the macros. We've covered how individual sectors are likely to perform in uh,
if perhaps in the coming few years. But I guess now a lot of people want to talk about individual stocks. So that's what uh, the next segment is going to be. This is our favorite segment where you get to quiz all these experts. Um, so we don't have too much time. So I request everyone to just. That go to the people. And if you and have I any questions, raise your hand. Well come to me. to join you. me on the stage. Let's go. So just some pointers as we start the Q&A. Uh, please raise your hand uh, when you want to ask a question. Mangalam will be coming to you and restrict it to only one question at a time so we can cover maximum ground. So those are just a few pointers for you. And also please say who the question is directed to. And at the same time we are live on Facebook as well. So you can put your questions on Facebook and for the people who are watching us on Facebook right now, you all can put your questions, we'll take questions from there too. Uh, I believe we have, uh, so you had a question, your name is? Atul. Atul, Atul has a question. Who's your question for? Uh, almost all the experts. All right. Because uh, most of them talked about a lot of changes in the market, especially the ups and downs or the volatility, what we call it as. As a layman, what would you suggest? Uh, should we be an investor or a trader? Or we can be both in such kind of a market? And uh, second is, does luck play any role in this? Or it's <laughs> only a uh, word that people use that if you are lucky, you can make money. Otherwise, you cannot. So this is what I would like. Rather interesting questions. I'd like to ask you, are you an investor or a trader? Both. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, always, always. I think. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, do you trade and invest, or are you? No, no, I think he on, already answered part of his question. So most of the people are uh, investor and a little bit of trading. Most of the people I am saying, but there are people who are only traders. There are people who are only investors. So I think you have to look at your own profile or your own psyche. So again, if you, if I can take the liberty of. Uh, quoting from yoga philosophy again. So there are three gunas. One is tamasic, one is rajasic, and then sattvic. Tamasic people are, which are not doing anything. Inertia, lazy, they don't do anything. And rajasic are traders. Because their rajas is very strong. Na? So they keep on, so they should learn, if you know you are rajasic, you should learn a little bit of technical trading. Then you should know when to put a stop loss and when to book your profit. And if you are sattvic, you are primarily investor. You are balanced person. So I think I have, I have given the answer the way I want it. And uh, uh, the luck plays a part. I think that we covered that over a longer period you will make money. And sometime luck will favor, and luck will favor the brave. Maybe these two people, gentlemen or lady can add. Thank you. I would like to add that, you know, you can be both trader and investor. But the critical thing is to know this trade I am doing for trading or investment. Because what happens if you don't know that this trade is for trading, then it goes down, you become investor. That's the lamest mistake that most of us, we keep doing that. So unless you know that this is for investment, so a lot of people when they trade on tips, still at least you can make by asking the person who has given tip, kya lagta hai, kaha jayega? So you have some idea about the price, kab tak jayega? Che mehna? Achha, to che mehna hai aapka target? Ne ki teen din mein kuch trade honne wala hai jane ka hai. So you at least know if it is not happened in three days, come out. Then trading call has to be treated as a trading call. Investments call, you can keep stay put for a longer time and ride the whole run. Prakash, Prakash you want to add something? I think that was brilliant. So it's, it's, we'll go to the next question. All right. In the meanwhile, we'll go on to a question coming in from Facebook. Uh, there's a question on the view on Reliance Cap for anyone who y'all can answer. Remember, the stock has been buzzing around lately. We also had Mr. Ambani coming in, giving their uh, future plan, future outlook for the company. So at this level, is it uh, still valuable or not? What's the view on uh, Reliance Capital? So I think very clearly it's run up very high on the back of expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this was one large NBFC or financial uh, services business which was not uh, 
uh, what I would say, uh, as popular or as uh, uh, you know keenly bought into by a lot of people when they bought brokerages, MFIs, housing finance. So it's trying to make itself much more amenable to the market is what I feel. They, they're trying to do the right things, uh, catch up of sorts, you know, with the larger players, uh, which will probably unlock value. But I would wait for execution to start happening now. You know, at 600 kind of levels, it's it's not a great risk reward uh, unless the execution falls in step with what they've promised and what they've committed. So I would wait for that and buy it on dips, not at this point. Okay, so stay the course at least for now. We're getting a few questions uh, from there. Uh, uh, just a second. I'll just go <laughs> to sir first. Uh, what's your name? Ashok Bhatt. Ashok Bhatt, what's your question? I would like to know, this current time, is it better to go in for uh, highly leveraged companies or uh, cash rich companies? And another is, whether we should go in for the import, uh, uh, Im those which import and those companies which export, which are the sectors which is going to give a better returns during the current period. So, uh, I, I should take it? Yes, yeah, sure. So, the, I think highly leveraged company, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, clear why you want to get into a very high leverage company. No, but you know, so, markets are at all time high. That yeah. could help in the companies raise some money yeah. and pare down their debt. And they're obviously much cheaper yeah. than the cash rich companies. So, I think that's okay. where the question comes from. So, that is the question? From. You want to get it? Okay, then maybe the, you have to look at uh, the usual thing. Maybe the leverage is because of which reason? If you look at the management, if the management is ethical, if there is an actual need of money, obviously this is a great opportunity to get in because interest rates are coming down. If, if the product, whatever product they are making, if the entry barriers are there, if there are numbers, financial numbers, if you are looking at those things are better, then obviously this may be a great opportunity. Like uh, recently we saw that uh, affordable housing has been given infra status. So these developers can raise money at a much, much lower rate. So these are the company I think you can get into. Any other names you all want to add on leverage companies which are looking good? So one of the play which we have been recommending is Jindal Steel and yeah, Power. Yes, That's are. largely because, you know, one of the way in which market calculates the value of the business called economic value. So in economic value, there is market capitalization and the whole debt. Market capitalization is very small, debt is very large, but the total value is still same. As your earning capacity increases, either by paying less interest or because your business has started doing better, and you pair your debt, which is where the environment is very conducive for this business at the moment, the reduction in debt compensates by increase in market cap. So I would like to probably go by saying that yes this is the time when the interest rates are lower structurally a lot of sectors are coming out of the pain and as what she says there is possibility of raising equity if need be leverage play could be one of the themes going forward with the caveat that the management should have some demonstrated capability to turn around and on import and export I would say domestic consumption itself means that focus on companies which are not to export focus, we are not so gung-ho on global growth, which is also, of course, improving, but we are more gung-ho on domestic growth. Prakash, you wanted yeah, to say so something? So I just want to explain this uh, economic value concept because you'll keep on coming across this term quite often. Uh, in very simple terms, that is economic value is the cost of acquiring that business. Today, if I were to acquire a business, I would have to buy all the shares, which is market cap, right, plus the debt, which is outstanding. So let's say it's 3,000 crores of economic value, 1,000 crores is market cap, 2,000 is the debt. As the company reduces that debt component, market cap would typically go up. So if it reduces by 500 crores, market cap would go up by 15, to 1,500 crores. That's the logic. So whenever you see a company that has a huge replacement cost and which is justified, not, you know, debt which has been raised to acquire new businesses uh, and money is kept uh, aside, they're not doing anything with it. That's unproductive debt. So debt is not bad, but what is the utilization of debt you need to see and how you know, it will improve if it has to be reduced, whether it will have a commensurate change in market cap. Because as an investor, shareholder, you'll make money there only, not on the debt side. So just keep that formula in mind. Very simple. Don't get complex, uh, I mean, confused by that terminology. Use it where every time you hear somebody says EV by EBITDA is this much, this is what it means. Thank you. All right, uh, we have another gentleman who's got a question. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm Chandrakan Kahlekar. I'm a, uh, just an investor. 
I'm not a trader. But uh, I would like to ask one question to the expert uh, in a simple way that uh, what would be the uh, last uh, destiny of uh, Nifty in the current year? <laughs> the target on Nifty in the current year. Open question. Anyone can take it. Crystal ball gazing. <laughs> I, I, I can only tell you Chandrakan will be higher than where we are. <laughs> but uh, levels, it's difficult to predict. I'm not an expert uh, or an astrologer who can do that. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people in the audience will be able to help you out. <laughs> Anyone else wants to hazard a guess? I would say that, uh, you know, looking at the way domestic inflows are panning out and also the fact that emerging markets, as a trade is coming back from domestic, uh, from the global markets, uh, we as a house feel 9,800, 10,000 could be a 12-month target for Nifty. Of course, with the caveat that there could be good bouts of correction uh, while we travel that journey. Right. Questions are flowing in taken fast on Facebook as well, so I'll uh, go address that one first. And this one's for you, Amisha. You spoke about uh, thyroid care, and uh, a person here wants to know, what's your view on Dr. Lal Path Labs as well? So amongst the two, we have chosen thyroid care. Uh, we, we know the whole industry, but amongst the two, we have chosen thyroid care because we think that the growth here will be much larger at a very small capex. Uh, so on, we have a buy here, but we don't have a buy rating on Dr. Lal. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Shamindra, uh, if I get your name right, you had a question. Yeah. Uh, I think the question is that uh, if you start with an investment philosophy and then you don't know at what point to sell and then you see that, you know, the stock has gone down 20 percent and then again it is lying low, then again it goes up and then again it goes down. So the problem with this investor mindset is that you keep looking at it and you say, oh my God, I mean, I have lost so much money because it's going up and down. So what is the solution for this problem? I mean, I think it's a problem because a lot of people start with being an investor and then they keep seeing things are moving up and down and he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, sure. I'll take, then you can also add. <laughs> I think I'll attempt. So I think it's a very good question and uh, very few people actually come and ask this question. Most of the people will say, what to buy, when to buy, how much to buy, but nobody comes and asks when to exit, why don't you tell uh, why, when to sell. So I think there are two, three things you should keep in mind. One, first of all, when you need money, you have to sell. If you don't have any other money, this is your investment and you have a need, you have to sell. Other is, if there is fundamentally something has gone wrong with a stock, if, if, you, if you hear that they are diversifying into a non-core area, if you, if you see that there are something wrong with the numbers, the, the numbers are fudged, we, we hear these stories, then you should not think twice, even if the company is in the, in the best performing zone and all, you should sell. So I think these are some of the things, or the PE has gone very high, like in 2000 we saw three digit PEs for software companies, I think that is the time you should sell. I think these are some of the things which we follow and we advise our retail investors, I think you can add. Sure, thank you. What I would like to say here is that, you know, for earning our any fixed salary, we devote our full day, all our energy. And from earning money from investing, if we don't invest time, it will not work. So the fact is, while any recommendation or investments that we have done, whether you have invested or we have recommended, it requires review. The review is different from looking at the prices. Review is on what assumptions we thought the growth is going to come in the company. Is company on the same trajectory of growth that we had outlined while telling that this is a good stock to buy? If that trajectory continues, that one is supposed to ignore the volatility because that is confusing all the investors. Markets are liquid. That should be taken as a benefit in case of need because when you need some money, you can't overnight sell a real estate, but you can stock. That should not become a deterrent that you are confused with the volatility of prices and you are ignoring the underlying trajectory of growth. So I would say that you should A, learn to review. Review on what? Review on the fact at what assumptions we bought that particular stock. So then you will remain less worried and confused about the volatility.
Right, and you know, sir, we try our best as a channel as well to analyze every bit of news when it comes to any, about any company, whether it's earnings or any corporate development. You know, so if, if you watch the channel also, you'll realize that we analyze the pros and cons of the particular development. So that will also help you review the port your portfolio of stocks. All right, I believe we have time for just one question. Let's uh, uh, direct it to a lady. Ma'am, uh, what exactly is your name and your question? Uh, I'm Divya Firwani and I'm new into trading. I've been doing this only for the past five, six months. So my question is that the market is at all-time highs, but I realize that my stocks are not at any all-time highs. So does that mean I'm into wrong stocks or, or is that normal? It depends on the cycle of that stock also yeah. because market went into all-time high with some themes, be it Reliance or be it ITC, yeah. in large cap. Uh, maybe even if you have uh, traded or you have just started trading, I don't know with what horizon you have started trading. So it may not necessarily mean that you are in wrong stock. No. Every stock has its cycle. Ma'am, you, you ever watch football? Yeah. So at times the team wins 2-1, two, 3-1, two, 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 but a lot of those guys don't score at all or they haven't touched the ball. So that's okay. Uh, you know, what yeah. works is a portfolio is like that team. You need to make sure that overall returns are at least on an average better than this thing. And the Nifty has uh, things that move once in a day, once in a week. And then, you know, so yesterday ITC took the entire Nifty up. There's nothing else which brought it up. Someday it is Reliance, someday it is TCS. So don't worry about all that. Don't benchmark yourself so closely. You're not a mutual fund manager, luckily, who has to, you know, uh, <laughs> deliver those kind of outperforming. See that you're making absolute wealth. That you are, you start with 100 and you make it 200. You know. All right, uh, we'll continue this discussion forward in just a bit. We're running out of time, so I toss it back to Reema with that. Okay, so we thank this audience. You guys have been great, and we especially thank our three experts and guests who've joined us today. But uh, today we also need to, you know, give a word of thanks to the Nifty uh, Millionaires. So let me invite the CEO of Nifty Millionaires, Mr. Pratik Patel. So can we have you on the stage? A big round of applause for him. So Nifty Millionaires was, I think this is more for you because all these guys know about it. It's been there, I think for four years now, you've got what, 40,000 registered users? Yes, and what's the philosophy behind Nifty uh, Millionaires? Yes, so Nifty Millionaire after working in nine years from last in stock market, that what we realize that mostly everyone knows that what to buy, what to sell, but what major problem we analyze with our customers that they are not able to do the discipline execution because what happened that if you buy a stock at 100 rupees it goes to 110 rupees and it again come to 105 rupees then they think that there is a mental accounting right so there is a mental loss of 5 rupees and when again they, when they came when they see the 110 price they exit it so that is a winner they should not exit but in loser they keep holding and holding so at nifty millionaire our focus is to convert that five percent audience like success ratio to make it a 75 percent and in last three years we had done a lot of work on a psychology part that how to make them overcome these all like you have mentioned this fear yeah, and we had done a lot of work in that side so in our Nifty Millionaire Club, after three years, we have around 40 to 42 percent people, those who are doing exactly what we are doing. So if we are getting a 30 percent return, they are almost getting 28 percent return. So before that, if I talk about we are getting 30 percent, they are getting minus 20 percent return. So there is a, like in Peter Lynch, we all knows that they had mentioned after the retirement, then they had seen the data that how much people actually made the money out of my fund. So when he sh see the data, he was shocked. Only 2% people had made the money. Mm. After making a huge return as a fund manager, so what is the problem? Problem is not that what to buy, what to sell, but stick to the basic principles. So people and make a stock trading or investing very complicated. It's a very simple thing if you follow the basic principles. So again, we have a lot of discussion outside that someone was talking that what to do, I, t I told them that what you should not do, that you should understand. What to do, everyone know. But what you should not do, that you should understand. And loss is only under your control, not profit. So that's a basic thing that we are trying to explore. So basically, we want to expand the community that those who are not investing. 
because everyone is focused as a like bank you are also focused on those who are doing as a brokerage also they are doing we are focusing on what they are not doing so there is a major audience 98 percent those who are not doing so we want to educate little by little and that you what guys are doing do. a great job so congratulations evangelist of the get rich uh, philosophy yes of course we so can keep the like fourth market expert <laughs> <laughs> all right we'd okay. like the experts to felicitate you sir thank you prakash thank you so much